Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at the DISS 15 Doppler and the clock in the hind. We're going to attempt to fly from Hama to Abu al Duhur, um, and you can see here that on that flight path there are very little reference points for us to navigate by, so we're basically going to have to rely on dead reckoning. Luckily, the hind comes with the DISS 1. 5, which is a Doppler navigation system, which can tell us by using a, a Doppler radar how far we're drifting off course. Now we're going to be flying at 0 to 9 degrees for around about 41.6 miles. We can also see here on our map that it's a course of 0 to 9 degrees with 76.7 kilometers, which should take us around 18 minutes. Another thing to keep in mind are wind conditions. Wind is currently 120 with 10 knots. That means we're going to be blown to the left off course. First, ensure that the circuit breaker is turned on. Next, we're going to have a look at the unit itself, which is located at the bottom right of your cockpit. The top row is how far right or left you're deviating off course. This will show you during flight where you are in relation to your course line. Then we have the distance with aft and forward and the corresponding buttons. This is a little confusing as forward means how much forward of your target you are on the course line and aft how much aft of the target you are on the course line. That means in order to dial in the distance to the target you press aft and once the distance counter switches to forward, you have passed your target. Last but not least is the course, but keep in mind this is in reference to the magnetic course. The one that you got from the map is a true course over the ground. Therefore you do need the magnetic variation. Ideally the mission maker should provide magnetic variation they usually don't, so there are a couple of ways how you can get hold of it. I've elaborated on this in my Huey basic navigation video, but the easiest way to do it on the fly is to compare the magnetic heading on the compass with the heading that is given to you in the F2 view, which is a true heading. So in this case, we had a true heading of 190 a compass heading of 185, that means the magnetic variation is plus 5. Now we want to fly a heading of 0 to 9 minus the magnetic variation of 5 degrees, means we have to fly a magnetic heading of 0 to 4. With this information we come back to the DIS-15, we dial in aft, so back 76.6 kilometers, and we dial in a heading of 0 to 4 degrees. And we of course also set our course to 0 to 4 degrees. Alright, that's all our preparations done. Let's taxi out to the runway. Alright, let's take a second to take a look at the clock. If you're working with other aircraft types or ground units, it might be necessary to do a time hack. So to synchronize your clocks, you can turn the right dial in order to stop the seconds hand. Now we right click the left dial and this enables us to turn it and manipulate the minute and hour hand. Now we're pushing it to 10 past, we're waiting for a time hack and we release the clock again at the point of the time hack and now all the clocks are synchronized. In addition we have the stopwatch, we press it once to start, once to stop and once to reset. And last but not least is the flight time clock. Uh, you switch modes by pressing the red button and it has three modes. Mode number one is the bright window for not taking off yet. Mode number two is half and half for the clocks running while you're in flight. And mode number three is a dark window for after landing. Now I advise actually making good use of this clock since it helps you immensely with fuel calculations. For example, it takes you half an hour to get into an area, you know you need half an hour to get 
back out of the area and then you can have a look at your fuel gauge once you get there and can calculate how much time on target you have, how much play time you got on your target. Now last but not least we actually have to activate our DIS-15 by pressing the on button. Okay, we're in the air, we're moving, everything's running. The first thing I like to do is get on course using traditional navigation. So I'm looking into the direction of 024 degrees and I'm trying to find a reference point on the ground. Now that big hill over there seems to be pretty much in 024 degrees. So I get my nose on it in order to verify. Yep, that hilltop is perfectly in 024. So now I adjust my course into the wind and make sure that I'm moving over the ground into the direction of that hilltop. Alright, we are underway, we passed our landmark, now it's time to take a look at the Doppler system for the first time. And we see, yes, we're right on course. Uh, we can see at the top that we're to the right of the track, but only by around 100 meters. Then we see that we're aft of the target by 66.5 kilometers, so we've already made around about 10 kilometers. And yeah, the course of 0 to 4 is still lighted on and the thing has turned on. Another thing I want to look at is the drift angle. Now again, this is determined by the Doppler and zero is my nose. Now the dial is showing me where I'm drifting thanks to stuff like aerodynamics and the wind. So in order to actually fly my course, I have to apply this drift angle to my course. So right now we're drifting about 12 degrees to the left. Therefore my nose has to be about 12 degrees right of the course with a course of 0 to 4, that means I have to fly 0 3, 6. Now, what happens if we don't account for wind and we simply fly with our nose towards the target? So after around a minute, let's take a look at the Doppler and yeah, we can see we're already one kilometer left of our track. So what we do, we have to correct again to get back on track. So with 024, we're drifting left. With roundabout 036, we're staying on track. So we go right of 036 in order to get further to the right to get back on track. A common way of doing this would be to double the drift angle, so instead of 036 flying 048, but I like to just take a round number that's to the right, so I'll fly 050. And there we are, we're back on track. But actually, let's keep going on this heading and try another course rejoin from the other side. And there we are, about one kilometer right off track, even a little bit more. So if we're drifting like this with 10 degrees or more towards the side we want to go in, the easiest way to rejoin the track really is to just fly the heading itself and let the wind push us back on course. And there we go, back on course, back on zero, and let's just maintain the course to see that we actually end up at the airport without any reference points out here. Okay, we're on course, you see 10 kilometers to go, and there is the airfield. Alright guys, I hope you found this helpful. Till next time.